Welcome back, Bulldog fans, to a homecoming edition of the Coach Atkins Show. Coach, it's been a good uh, couple of weeks here for you. Uh, let's kind of take a, a little rewind recap at Charleston. Another um, good performance by your offense. Luke Dyer, back-to-back, -back, really good performance with the, that receiving core. And, of course, your defense played phenomenal. Um, talk about some things, though, that you saw that you want to work on. It's easy to talk about the, the fun stuff. Talk about what you saw that you, know, you, you, you didn't like. Yeah, um, there's obviously always things that, that we got to work on and then we got to fix. Um, again, we got to continue to grow each and every week, and, and that's our sophomores getting another game under their belt. Uh, our, our starting quarterback, right? This is his first season um, at the helm there. And so j it's just everything like that that, that we got to, and we have so far up to this point progressed each and every week, came back out on the practice field and, and have gotten better. And, and so we have to continue to work on those things. Um, and, and you can check the grades that we sent out to the kids. There, there is definitely still things that, that we need to work on and continue to improve on, again, if we want to get to where our goals um, are that, that we set out for ourselves. That being said, um, that was a pretty flawless game. We, 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 we were clicking in, in, on all three cylinders and in, in all three phases of, of the game of football. Um, our, our offensive tempo was, was the best I've seen it in probably the five years that I've been here. Um, we were playing incredibly fast. Again, not allowing their defense time to line up. That's why we were getting those quick scores and what and some might even think were easy scores. Um, and again, that's a credit to our offensive coaching staff and then our offensive players and how fast they were going, not allowing Charleston to, to even line up correctly. So I was very proud of that. Again, you know, Charleston's rushing game, I think their running back had, had over 100 yards, plus yards in, in, in each one of the first three games. We held them to six. You know, uh, we were flying around. We were fast and physical on their home turf, right? Like so. It, and then, and then special teams. I mean, again, the the fake PAT, the onside kick, uh, Jackson Davis still knocking them down. I mean, I could go on for days. We we played a very good football game um, up until obviously, you know, we got the forty three point lead and, and and then got got some of our backups some reps and and again, we we need to improve those guys as well because. You know, not only for situations like that, but certainly moving forward, if those guys, if, if their time gets called, um, we need them to be ready to go. And, and, and so that's another aspect that we kind of looked at um, as, as far as to your question about how can we continue to improve on things. Yeah, good point. And uh, we even saw some guys step forward this week uh, and fill some gaps without LJ and those guys. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned special, special teams. We've talked and kind of highlighted the offense a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the defense and some of those guys that don't get a lot of pub. Mm -hmm. um, this week, it's, it's time to talk about the special teams. This is a perfect segue to talk about that special teams group. Talk about him. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, first off, we got to shout out Coach Pogue. Uh, he's our special teams coordinator. And, and, and it's very rare in the game of football that you find a coach, let alone coaches, that that love special teams um, and that put the time and the effort into special teams that, that Coach Shirley does. And then you throw on all of his years of experience and, and, and how creative his mind is. I mean, I, I could show you guys things that he comes up with. I mean, we're put mm, – I probably shouldn't say that. We're doing a couple things this week that, that are even different, right? And, and, and each and every week, Coach brings something to the table as far as special teams-wise. Again, whether it's kickoff return or a, a new kickoff, we, we mentioned the on onside kick that was all coach Pogue and, and and I'll talk about Tyler here in a little bit as well but but again just the way coach brings or what he brings to our special teams unit um, is absolutely incredible and 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 I'm extremely grateful to to have him on staff let alone have him put in the time and effort uh, to that special teams unit um, but yeah I, I mean Tyler Majors last week He's out here getting extra kickoffs. He all week long in pre-practice was 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 really focused in on on making sure that that he executed that onside kick and and man he kicked it beautifully and and right there you know and and we recovered it and, and it was awesome. Um, again, Jackson Davis, a sophomore, 
um, I think 14 straight PATs uh, and, until until we had that one blunder on his last one there uh, at, at Charleston, and that's my fault. I took the delay of game. We had subs in, and and I wanted our first group PAT to go back out there, so we ended up taking the delay of game, so we didn't waste a timeout and and, and put it on the right hash. And it's a long story, so I'll take the heat for that one. But uh, but 14 in a row, you know, successful on PATs again as a sophomore to to step up and in that mindset. Uh, just, just couldn't be more proud of him. Um, you know, Luke Dyer is our punter, and, and he's had some incredible punts this year. You know, a couple at Q&D that, that pinned him back deep. Um, certainly, you know, changed the field here at Highland. Uh, again, to ask a quarterback to, to also punt the ball and, and to do what he's done has just been incredible. Uh, some of our return guys, you know, Braden Pagel, Braden Garrett, uh, Donovan Lewis, you know, th those are some names that, that we hear, you know, maybe on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. But certainly, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to be able to have the majority of our starters on special teams as well. So we just feel that that, that gives, us, gives, gives us a leg up on, on some of our opponents, you know, when maybe they're subbing and putting in those sophomores, you know, we still have our starters out there. Um, so that's certainly, you know, certainly great for us to have. And, and those return guys are doing a great job, you know, getting, getting as many yards as they can. Um, and, and I got a feeling we're, we're going to take one back for sure. Um, and, and then on top of that, like I said, I, I could go on for days uh, about the guys filling in. You know, Colby Crowley, the way he runs the lane. Um, Hayden Hart's done a good job. Noah Scott's done a great job. I, I, could, I could honestly go on for days uh, just, just about kids playing their role and doing their job, right? Uh, running down your lane in a kickoff is not a, a glamorous position. And unless you make the tackle, you're probably not going to get recognized. Um, but but, but, but those guys are doing their job and doing their part, which allows that tackle to be made. And again, so far, knock on wood up to this point, um, we've done an incredible job on, on special teams in, in every different uh, special team that we have. And, and so we hope to, hope to continue that for sure. Well, it's obvious you guys spend time and practice on that third unit um, because it shows in the games. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, let's talk about this week. Homecoming, I uh, can't believe it's here already, number mm -hmm. one. Uh, it's a fun week for the kids. It's a fun week for the whole school. Obviously, we prayed last night, powder puff football, all those traditions. Um, but we've got a we've got an opponent looming uh, next week. We're not going to talk about that. But how do you keep it focused on the job at hand and not look ahead to next week's matchup? Uh, and, and all the other distractions come along with homecoming. No question, and I'll tell you who it's not fun for is is me. Um, I, I'll I'll venture out to say that that probably a good majority of head football coaches will tell you they absolutely hate homecoming. And again, I'm I'm happy for our kids, and and they get to experience all this. And you're only a kid once, right? And 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 our seniors, you know, about to graduate, so this is their last homecoming that they get with their high school buddies. So I'm never going to tell a kid not to be a kid and enjoy high school and have fun. Um, but from a coach's perspective, I can't stand this week because of those distractions that you mentioned. I will say this though, as much as our coaching staff has has reinforced, you know staying focused and staying disciplined this week. Um our kids are really good kids, and, and they've bought into that. Again, they're going to be kids and have fun, but they also understand the task at hand. And, and we know um, that, again, all of this is built around what we have to do on Friday night, and, and we certainly have to take care of business. Again, we – we want to put on a great show for, for our fans, and it's going to be a packed place and, you know, and induct the new Hall of Fame members. That, that, that's always a, a great tradition here at this school. Um, so it, it's not easy. In, in your case, like you pointed out, too, about the opponent next week, it's very easy to, to kind of look ahead. Um, but, again, our, our kids, they're smart enough to know this is another opportunity, not only for us to get better, but for us to, to, to go out and, and continue to work on things. And we're back home. We love being at home. You know, again, any chance that we get to put on a show in front of our fans, um, it run through the tunnel with the band playing. I mean, it's just it's a special feeling that that I truly believe once that happens, all those distractions kind of go away. And at least for two hours, they're focused, you know, on the task at hand. And that's winning a football game. So uh, I am very proud of our kids, the way they've handled this week. Um, like you mentioned, the, the homecoming 
parade and, and, and in the powder puff game last night, we had our walkthrough this morning and our kids were still focused and sharp and, and executed exactly what we needed them to do. So as many distractions as there are and, and including the, the game next week, um, our, our kids have remained focused and, and I'm excited for our opportunity on Friday. Great. We're excited. We're excited to be there Friday, too. Uh, let's talk a little bit. It's kind of a unique situation this season that you have three home games in a row now. This week, of course, and then two more weeks, and then you're on the road the rest of the way uh, until playoffs, of course. So what do you, as a coach, do you, do you like that? Do you, is, it, is it something you don't like? Would you rather go you know, home than away? Or do you just not really care either way? <laughs> uh, I'll take all nine of them at home if I can get them. Um, because again, we we haven't lost in, at home here, and I think it's two and a half years, three years, or whatever. Um, you know, we 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 protect this house, and 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 that's that's what we do. And so, yeah, I, I love the fact that that we get these next three um, at home again against a very good three and one Taylorville team, a potentially four, five and oh, uh, a Mount Zion team, and, and then a very good physical uh, Effingham team. So those are certainly three games that, that if I had my choice, I would love to have them at home. And, and so we're, we're very lucky that we get that opportunity. Again, our, our crowd, our student section, our band, our community, our fans, Bulldog TV. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's all added to, to the atmosphere and, and, and to everything that makes it so special. So I love that we're at home. Um, can't wait for the opportunity. And again, you know, this being homecoming, it's, it's always nice um, that, that we get to see some alumni members. I've had several kids text me, you know, that they're coming back to the game. And <laughs> I can't wait to see them. You know, it's always special to get to see those kids again. And, and again, we, we got a job to do and, and take care of business uh, in, front of our, in front of our home fans. So, Well, we're, I know Chad, I'm speaking for Chad here and Chris, but boy, we're excited. And Heiser, of course. We're excited about being home because we get to have some fun along with you on Bulldog TV. And we'll see you Friday night, 7 o'clock. We'll be on a little earlier to talk some pregame. Uh, we'll see you Friday night. Come on out if you're local for homecoming. That's it for this week's edition of the Coach Atkins Show.